the assignment so much I could hardly wait. Now, look, I see you. Uh... Officer Taylor, if you don't mind. If they want to buy the book, that's how it'll be. Lieutenant Riker, Officer Taylor. It's the way you want it. Nothing about this is the way I want it. Nothing I can do about it now, so let's get to it, Lieutenant. Who do I ride with? thought I'd run in here and look around, see how they're getting along without me. Dumb broad. Officer Taylor. Okay, Cindy, night work's over. Take a hike back to the pad. Heard they shuffled you out of here, Taylor. Move it. Now. You don't have no right to tell me where to go. Any more lip out of you, and I'll find enough right to throw you in the camp for a week. Now move it. Starting countdown. Five. Four. Three, two. One and blast off. I think that's called rousting a citizen, isn't it? Some people call it that. I call it getting the garbage off the sidewalk. There's no legal justification for it. Then report it. Maybe it will. And I'll deny it. And I've been on the force nearly 20 years. Now, which way do you think they'll lean, Webster? You don't know very much about me, Webster, but I know that you were the first black officer ever hired by the department. And I was looking forward to working with you. Was? That's right. Well, I don't share that with you, Rookie. I wasn't looking forward to working with you. I got this assignment because some shiny badge upstairs felt R.C. Taylor was coming down too tough on the sweet citizens like that bimbo Cindy. I think you're supposed to help me see the light. Uh, precinct is back that way, Officer Taylor. <laughs>
Nothing, Webster. Worse than when I joined up. The place is worse and the people know better. Well, what can you expect? They're mostly black, after all. Yeah, well, all I know is I had guts and brains enough to get out. Oh, man, you never got out. You come back every night to lean on people and show how superior you are to everything and everyone. Hold it. Looks like a flashlight. Call in a possible 459 in progress. Take the alley, I'll take the front. This is Ludlow 9. We have a possible 459 in progress. Giving them his rights yet. You don't give people rights, man. They earn them. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you. You have the right to an attorney. If you can have an attorney, one will be appointed for you. Do you understand what I just said to you? I understand. Does he? Is there any trouble? I don't know. I think... I think somebody saw me. Who? The black kid in the alley. I'm pretty sure he saw me. Oh. I saw this guy come out, and I figured he had already ripped the place off on the of the way it looked, you know? But you did break in, Mark. And whether or not somebody else was in there ahead of you has nothing to do with it. You mean you believe what he's handing out? Now, what I do and what I don't believe has nothing to do with it here, officer. What we're concerned about is what happens to Mark. You gonna send him to the reform school? No, I don't think so. Your son has been in some scrapes. Most of it looks to be relatively minor. Might send him to camp, though. What kind of camp? Oh, it's just a camp up near Sand Lake, a place where kids can get rid of some pressure. We get to know them, they get to know a little about us. Oh boy, that's terrific. He burglarizes a store, you send him to camp. If he'd kill someone, I suppose you'd give him two weeks in Hawaii. All yours, Webster. Too thick in here for me. What about him, Mrs. Culpepper? Could you have Mark here Friday to leave for camp Friday morning? He'll be here. You can count on it. Good. We'll see you then. Around 10 o'clock. What about it, Mark? Uh, will we see you Friday at 10? She said so. <clears throat> you didn't. Friday around 10. I'll be here. He will be here. Good night, officer. Webster, this camp, you know, we staff it with police personnel. Yes, sir, I heard. Mike Danko has signed up for this weekend. His wife is coming along to make sure everyone gets their flu shots. I was wondering if you and your partner might like to donate some time this weekend. I'd love to, Lieutenant, and I bet that Willie would, too. I wasn't talking about Gillis, Officer Webster. 
I meant your new partner. Well, what about it, Mr. Maxwell? Is that everything that was taken? I'm not sure. Give me another minute. You say you caught him? Another unit did, sir. Right outside the back door. Uh-huh. What's his name? Oh, we're not allowed to tell you that, sir. He's a juvenile. The department has decided not to seek petition for trial. What? After he stole all these things? Mr. Maxwell, all those things were recovered. We would prefer to help him, and sending him to jail or reform school isn't likely to do that. Uh-huh. Uh, what do you say? Is that uh, everything? Let me check with the bookkeeper. He knows my inventory better than I do. I'll be right back. I don't get the feeling he's on our side. Yeah, me either. Now, if we could get that kid a life sentence, he'd probably love us. Yeah. They didn't find the record player. The kid must have ditched it before they put the arm on him. And if we don't find out where the kid put the stuff, we're in very big trouble, Donald. Maybe the cops took it. They'll do that. No, no, not this way. It's the kid who knows where the pills are. Where is he now? I don't know where he is. I don't know who he is, but I can tell you what he is, Donald. He's the thing that can get us killed. I promised to deliver that stuff Monday. And if I don't deliver, we're dead. I'll find out who he is, Mr. Maxwell. I want to get him just as much as you do. Believe me. You realize this is the first time in almost a year we've been able to get out of town for a full weekend? Too bad not all of us get to go. Well, somebody's got to fight crime in the city. Thanks. Thanks for the vote of confidence. Besides, uh, we don't get extra pay for this, you know. Well, don't blame me. I voted for the police bond issue. Not my fault it didn't pass Gillis! Excuse me, please. Yes, sir. What can we do for you? Uh, my name's Dennis Palmer, and I'm supposed to go to this camp this weekend. Well, it looks like you didn't get your bags loaded with the rest of them. No, sir, I didn't. Well, there you go, Mr. Palmer. I think you can consider your luggage loaded. You know how to get to the bus, Dennis? No, ma'am. Well, you come on with me, then. We'll get lost together. We'll see you guys out there. Oh, Willie, don't forget to water the plants. You got it. You know, that's a big responsibility, but I think I can handle it. Well, let's get this thing going, huh? Oh, hey, uh, uh oh This is a bad omen, gentlemen. If I were you, I'd stay home. Well, you ain't us and we ain't staying. The that Palmer kid's looking for trouble. Oh, boy. Tell you one thing. There's no vacation we're going on. I reported here because it still meant street duty. Nobody said anything about nurse mating junior hoods at a summer camp. You reported here because you're a policeman. That's the same reason you'll report to the camp. Oh, Eddie, I'm no shrink. I thought it was lieutenant and officer between you and me. Eddie, Eddie. Well, we go back too far for this to happen. Come on, get me out of it. I'm asking you as a favor. Why? Because I don't believe in any of the stuff they do up there. If I don't believe in it, I won't be any good. I won't be able to help any of those kids. That's the whole point, isn't it? That's half the point. And what's the other half? Find out how many policemen can be helped. It's a two-way street. All this because I say that kid's lying about someone else being in the record shop. Not really, but I think you might be interested to know. The lab says there may have been two points of entry. The back window Culpepper broke, plus evidence the front door was jimmied. That's what they think, not what I think. Pack your bag. Your bus leaves at 10. And one more thing. What? Next time you put a fist on my desk, make sure there's a badge in that fist. So that's the only way you're going to get away with it next time. I've got six pens, jolly, jolly six pens. I've got six pens to last me all my life. I've got two pens to spend and two pens to land and two pens to send home to my wife. Poor wife, no cares now.
Hello. I got the kid's name, Mr. Pierce. What is it? Oh, no. No, no. That's not our deal. I give it to you over the phone. You might not be good to me. I know you want to be good to me, don't you, Mr. Pierce? My place. Eight o'clock tonight. See you then. do these things, as I recall. <laughs> OK. See you later. Well, like I said, there'd be uh, sacrifices to being a cop, but he left that one out. Well, don't let it get you down. <laughs> I hear that we'd be too busy to notice. Enjoying yourself. Yeah, well, don't kid yourself. I'm just here because, well. Oh. <laughs> All right, come on, let's go. Come on, come on. Okay, come on. Come on. Let's get this one. Curveball, seen better days. You'll come back, Tiger. I got faith in you. Yeah. Hey, Mike, what are we gonna do about the stuff we found in the kid's suitcase, huh? Didn't you keep it? No. He just would have thought we'd gone through everybody's luggage. That wouldn't have accomplished anything. Didn't look the type, does he? I mean, I know there's no type, but um, he doesn't look like he'd be smoking grass. Tell you what, I'll let you know. See you in a minute. Doesn't waste much time, does he? Hey, that was a nice hit, man. Thanks. Hiya. Hi. How you doing? OK, I guess. Why? I... I wanted to tell you, your suitcase dropped off the luggage rack when we were loading it. Popped open. We put everything back. Everything? That's what I said. I just wanted you to know. Hey. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, look, I'd say you better get yourself a new suitcase. Either that or maybe not put so much junk into it for your own sake. Huh? Sing songs and modeling clay and kickball and all that tough stuff, you know. <laughs> is uh is that what a cop's about? Being tough? 
I got that little punk back, didn't I? Yeah, 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 you got him back. Nice throw. I don't know what he uh, feels about us, but nice throw. Oh, I already know what he feels about me. Traitor to the race, just like you feel. No, that's not how I feel. Oh, come on, don't give me that, Webster. They all feel that way about me. They had me transferred because I was tougher and came down harder on them than any white cop ever did. And if I hadn't, they'd have booted my can into the swamp and said, see, see, black guy can't cut it. And that would have closed the door on you and every other black cop that's come along since me. One question. Uh -huh. You say tougher on them, came down harder on them. Who is them? People who live there. Mostly black, right? Uh-huh. Brothers, right? Uh-huh. Well, tell me, Officer Taylor, what did we gain by a black cop who comes down harder and is tougher than any white cop around? What did we gain? Hmm. What did we gain? We gained a black cop like you, Webster. That's what we gained. And it took a guy like me to do it. kid's name. Where is he? Well, his name I know. But all it said in the booking officer's report was that he was under the juvenile authority and that stuff is downtown. And his name is Mark Culpepper. Cul Culpepper. Culpepper. Okay. You wait here. I'll get the stuff. Hi. You're a your boyfriend sure wants to get a hold of that kid pretty bad. What's the matter? You got something on you? No, they're just old friends. Donald just wants to reminisce with him. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> Smitty, you sick? You got a cold? No. It's just that sometimes I get really faint at the sight of blood. <laughs> Feel all right? Yeah. Yeah, I feel fine. I don't feel faint at all, not one little bit.
Gillis, you and Danko questioned the owner of that record store that got busted into, didn't you? Yes, sir. Anything out of line? Well, it didn't seem to be. Well, I wasn't too happy about her not preferring charges against Culpepper, but no big deal about it. Well, it still doesn't fit. The lab says the Jimmy marks on the front door were made from the inside. What do you make of that? Beats me, but that place is starting to develop a reputation as being a meeting place for users. Meet me here at 8 o'clock in the morning. We'll stop by. We'll talk to that man again. Okay. Um, Lieutenant, I'm on duty here till 4. All right, make it, make it uh, 8.15. Pepper? Oh, I most assuredly am. I'm Miss Hubbard, Mrs. Culpepper. I work for the Youth Authority. I'm really sorry to trouble you so late, but I need some information on your son, Mark. Do you think you could help me? Miss Hubbard, I'll be glad to help you do anything to help my boy. <laughs> Won't you come in, please? Yes. Take some movies for me? I don't know how to work one of those things. That doesn't make a bit of difference. I don't know how either. Look. Look right through here. Point it at Mike, okay? Okay, we're okay. There you go. Yeah. Now I'll zoom in. Michael! Hey, how you doing, Dennis? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> together sometimes, you know, throw the ball around, stuff like that. I suppose so. Maybe what you ought to do is join one of those leagues. There ought to be plenty of them around there where you live. Yeah, I guess there are, but it's not just throwing the ball around. It's having someone to talk to. A guy, I mean, a guy older than me. Yeah, I think I could squeeze some time out, throw the ball around with you, Dennis. Wait. You stay there. I'll take your picture. Okay. Uh, how's this? Yeah. Yeah. Is my horse smiling? Well, you can move around, can't you? And I'm moving oh, pictures. Man. Oh, hey. <laughs> Hi. We got ourselves a little lost. Can you help us out? Yeah, highway's back the same way you came, about a quarter of a mile or so. Is there anything interesting up that way? Oh, I'm sorry, that's private property. That's operated by the police department. Oh, you mean there's a, a prison or something up there? Uh, no, it's, uh, it's a camp for kids. They come on the weekends, get a little fresh air and exercise. That's about all there is to it. Oh, well, if it's just for the weekend, we could go up through there after Sunday, then. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, we'll be gone. I don't suppose anybody would mind. Well, thank you very much. Sure. Have a good weekend with the kids. OK. I guess they got you outnumbered, huh? <laughs> yeah, about 10 to 1. That's why we can only do it on the weekend. Thank you. So Take care, you bet. OK, buddy. Let's see if we can get that guy from the police lab to develop that brilliant film of yours. You call me buddy. Are we buddies? Sure. One plus one? You got it, one plus one. Come on. Hey. No, Gil, 
because he was telling the truth, I'd stake my life on it. Well, how could he tell us the truth when he didn't tell us anything? He didn't say anything to us out loud, but the look on his face when I told him the door was Jimmy from the inside, that's what you call a real loud look. Excuse me, please. Sergeant Racker, uh, may I speak to you a minute, please? Oh, Mrs. Culpepper, of course. Oh, sure, come on in. Have a seat. Thank you. Come on in. What can I do for you, ma'am? Well, I don't know if I should even be troubling you with this. <laughs> maybe I, I, I'm being silly. Well, maybe so, maybe not. Let us be the judge of that. Well, last night, when I got home, there was a girl waiting for me, a Miss Hubbard. Said she worked with the Youth Authority. Maybe you know her. No, but that doesn't mean I think it's a pretty large department. Well, she said she was there to check on Mark. And I told her Mark wasn't home, that he was at the camp, that you folks run up there for the weekend. But she didn't seem to know about it. Maybe there was a slip-up. She just never got the word. Then there was her eyes. Ma'am, what about her eyes? Well, I know young folks don't do like they did when I was a girl, but she had eyelashes on, fake eyelashes, out to here. Looked like two upside-down rakes. Now, does the city hire those type of girls to work with the youth authority? Gillis, call the youth authority. Find out if they got a female on the staff by the name of Hubbard. Yes, sir. All right, now, there it is. What's on fire? A gas uh, yes. no no train. Stables. Now, how does this connect with the fire? Panic. Uh, probably a pawn spreading. scepter, something like that. Something that went up in the riot. Rebellion. Any ideas over here? Most likely what the kid said, riot. And uh, no. What do you think it was? Well, uh, I don't know. Maybe you don't want me to say. I, I mean, I know what it is. I was there. But go ahead. OK, that's, that's the block party. That's the opening of the park over on Winston. That is precisely what it was. And what you've done, all of you, well, most of you, is assume that because young people and police were involved, that that had to mean trouble. Uh, Miss Reynolds, you've stacked it, haven't you? I mean, you show them the fire, and what are they expected to believe, to think? What are we supposed to think? Well, it's not a question of what's expected. See, all we're trying to do is to try to get past some stereotypes, all of us, and open a few doors to what's inside. And one of those stereotypes is that youngsters need to go to bed by 9 o'clock. That's not true. But adults do. <laughs> so, all right, everybody up the hill to camp. Mark. What about the fire? A caretaker will put it out. See you tomorrow, Blaze. Jumbo Webster won't change anything or anyone. Yeah, well, I bet you that kid back there. Trying to run away? Huh? I saw the man who was in the record store. Come on, son. Don't you never get tired of lying?
Now listen here. I spent 20 years trying to build this drugstore into a place where people like to do business. And they don't like you kids and your gangs hanging around out in front. Well, where are we supposed to go? There's no place in this stinking neighborhood where we can have any fun. And it's not a gang. I don't care what it is, just so long as it's not in front of my store. Oh, you don't want us in front of your store. But you don't mind hustling pills at the school now, do you? Yeah. Yes. Is that true, Linda? Does he push pills in school? Well, I can't say for sure, but a lot of the kids say that he does. Well, have you ever considered taking it to the police? Police would do nothing. They're all in the tape. Oh, they are, huh? Well, then, uh, how come I still owe on my car and my TV if all cops are on the tape? I didn't mean you. I meant... Yeah, you meant him. You meant all of us. We're all no good, and we all cheat, and we all lie, and that's how you read us, and that's how we'll be. How about how you read them? I mean... As far as you're concerned, they all lie. They all cheat. Mm, maybe not all of them. Why didn't you believe what Mark said? I mean, the man in the woods with a gun? Oh, come on, Webster, you don't swallow that. Yeah, but whether you believe him or not, at least you could have investigated. I did. I looked around. There was nobody there. The way Mike. you looked around was like what you were looking for didn't exist. It didn't. The kid was taken off, I tell you. How do you know? How do you think you'd feel if you were Mark? Suppose, suppose he was telling the truth, that there was some guy in the woods and he comes to you, a police officer. You call him a liar. How do you think that goes down? Mike, the movies came back from the police lab today. I want you to see them. I can't believe this. Hey, come, come on, on. listen, there's something minute. wrong with them. What? What could be wrong? I, look, just humor me, okay, and look at them. There's something in there I think you should see. Ah, forget it. That's kid stuff. It's for people who have something to learn. And that's them. And that's us. I know all I need to know about these kids. But maybe you don't know everything you need to know about you, and that's the point. I know I put in almost 20 years, and I can tell when some fuzzy cheek kid is lying. Hey, man, I don't need this. He wouldn't believe me if I told him the grass was green. The kind of grass you know about ain't green. Hey, Mark. Mark. You said I was supposed to enter into the discussion. I entered. Okay, stand closer so you can see better. Well, look, baby, this is all nice, but... Just watch. Okay, right there. Did you see it? I saw the guy button his coat, but I... Wait a minute. Let me run it backwards for you. Okay. Now watch. Okay. Right there. He's got a gun. starts reaching for his gun. Well, that's because nearly 100 of them lost their lives in the line of duty last year, and that makes a man a little bit twitchy, young lady. Then why do we have to pay the price of that? No, you're not paying the price. The price was paid by all those dead cops. Webster, where is Mark Culpepper? I don't know, Lieutenant. He left. He could be in his cabin. Why, is he wanted for something heavier than the record shop deal? Looks like he's wanted, but not by us. The way things are starting to fit, it looks like somebody's on their way up here to try to shut him up. He said last night that somebody tried to get him in the woods. He said that? Nobody did anything about it? Nobody tried to find the man? It's a man and a woman we want, Lieutenant. Well, a man and a woman sounds more like it, according to what we've learned. Now, the only question is, where is the boy?
Mister, I ain't gonna tell anybody I saw you in the record store. That's right, kid. You sure ain't. This way. You're not in there. Not here. Same here. All right, now the three of you know the terrain around here. Cover any path that looks like a logical route through the woods of the highway. We'll take the car, we'll block the road. Go! Nothing. Let's get in the car. All right? Yeah, you'll be all right. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Was I speeding? Okay, why don't you take it with you? Well, guess I better be going. Guess you better be going. See you. Anybody meeting you? My mom's working. I'll probably take the bus. Well, I'm, uh, I'll be finished here in a few minutes if you want to ride. I'll... It's a long drive. Longer bus drive. Give you a present. A present? Well, you didn't need to do that, Dennis. But it's a present you can't keep. 
Gotta promise to throw it away. It's a good present, Dennis. We appreciate that. just came running out of here crying. How come? Oh, because, uh... He's not a little boy anymore. <laughs> <laughs>